So everyone here has probably at least played Castle Crashers a few times and maybe even played the game in unconventional ways. But I can almost guarantee not a lot of people have beaten the game using only the shovel and horn. Now for this run to be possible we're going to have to play on a character that has already beaten normal mode so we can unlock the horn. So I went with the red knight as he has maxed out strength as well as maxed out defense. But to make the challenge a little bit more difficult as that's what we like to do around here I was allowed no pet and only a level 1 weapon that provided no stat buffs and with everything set up we can now start this run so a fun little interaction with the shovel and horn is that the shovel actually can hit enemies twice once when you stick it into the ground and once when you flick it up meaning the shovel is going to be our best damage source however the horn has slightly a bit more range so you can actually be outside the melee range of most enemies as well as it having a lot of vertical range so this gave us two different choices of damage depending on the scenario and it's at this point in the run we learn something really interesting for him to start shooting wait did i just crit with a shovel okay so you can hit crits with both the shovel and the horn so one problem that we ran into quite a bit was there is a delay when you actually attack and the attack happens meaning you have to get the timing of your attacks pretty perfect or else you can get hit out of it it wasn't long until we came across our first boss and since we did have max strength and max defense it wasn't actually too bad as we were chunking it with the shovel shovel strat is op i'm sure it was just a fluke though it's the first boss after all uh-huh so it turns out that the shovel and horn damage actually scales with your character's strength and since we had a lot of it we were doing a lot of damage to these early game bosses however this wouldn't last long as later on in the game the enemies have a lot more health and do a lot more damage so it wasn't always going to be this easy but anyway we rescued the first princess now moving on to the thieves forest was a really annoying area since thieves have the tendency to keep their distance and shoot arrows at you and well since all of our damage sources relied on getting as close to the enemy as possible this ended up being quite annoying Eventually we made it onto the troll mother boss fight and this boss was pretty annoying. So as you expect, a boss that summons a lot of enemies isn't going to be easy for this challenge. And well, we pretty much spent the entire fight having to run around in circles and get one or two attacks off on the boss. And by attacks, I mean blowing my horn at her. Once again, the horn just had a slight bit more range in the shovel, which allowed us to get more consistent damage on a lot of the bosses and enemies in the game, as it just gave us that extra split second to avoid melee damage. But but after a little while we defeated the troll on the boss fight and could move on to the next section. The river section was a bit of a problem since we had to be standing on a floating object in order to just use our utility and the little bats that came were a proper nuisance. And that's because they would latch onto your head and normally you would spam the melee attack button to get them off but that wasn't allowed for this run. This meant we pretty much just had to let them attack us until we would get knocked off our raft which would also kill the bat. It took a while but eventually we got to the catfish fight. So in this run any boss that has a damage phase where you're guaranteed not to get hit would mean that we would use the shovel for this because we could get the most dps as well as be safe from being knocked out of it so this meant that during the damage phase all we had to do was use the shovel until the boss finally died next was the tall grass section where we for some reason just decide to kill these bears they didn't really kidnap the princesses or do anything but we're gonna kill them for traveling through their land how are we the good guys? I've seen what the king does. But here we learn something interesting about the shovel and that is when you dig it into the ground you do less damage than when you pull it out. So the first number hits for 25 but the second number hits for 30. If I had to guess I would probably say that the first hit registers as a light attack and the second hit is a heavy attack but I'm not too sure. Soon we came on to the next boss fight and this one was very annoying and that's because well the boss has rammy which will ram into you and knock you down as well as having three other enemies that love to shoot arrows and spam magic at you on top of that the boss himself would also go into this tornado mode which would knock you down if you touched it so all of this with a build that has a damage delay meant it took quite a long time but after running around in endless circles we were eventually able to get the boss's health low enough to where we could finish him off but after defeating the bear boss we made our way into the caves and came across our next boss of the run which i only recently learned had a name and are you ready for this PP Strello. <laughs> PP Strello. Like, what? We somehow managed to glitch him again, like we do in every single run. So he just kind of stood there and took the damage as we shoveled him to death. Next was the flower fields where we played some sweet symphonies for the bees. But I had to hurry through the fields and get into the wedding reception as I had a hot date lined up for me. So, do you come here often? Uh, first dates never work out. And well, if I can't find happiness, neither can this groom. And for the groom boss fight, it was very difficult to get a hit on him as 
as he would run around the arena like a madman and then just go shoot bombs. So I was really struggling just to get any damage. But when I eventually got that lucky hit and knocked him to the floor, it wasn't too difficult to keep him stun locked. And yeah, that's all we had to do. Just get one lucky hit and stun lock him. So it didn't take long, but we eventually moved on to the carriage section of the game. And this is unfortunately where we meet our first roadblock of the run. And that is simply because the troll boss here is out of range for our shovel and horn, meaning we couldn't reach him to do any damage. I tried pretty much everything I could think of and there was only one viable damage source. When the thieves will spawn in, there's a small chance they would shoot an arrow. Now I had to get the thief to spawn in on a specific side, shoot an arrow, I then had to dodge the arrow and then it had to hit the boss. All of this worked for a measly 6 damage. Now according to the wiki, the troll has 500 HP in normal mode and well you do 500 divided by 6 and that equals 83.33 so we had to do that 83 times. So this is unfortunately the first boss of the run that is impossible to do with this challenge. But that's not going to stop us, so after swiftly defeating the troll boss by other means, we moved on to the second cave. And oh boy, I was finally excited to continue this run. Surely the hard part was past as an hour. It sure did take a while, but eventually we made it to the Cyclops boss fight. Now with every other challenge run I've done so far, the Cyclops was very easy. And that is because the Cyclops is very predictable and allows a large damage window. So all I had to do was shovel him and wait. So in the bow and arrow challenge we did, we found that you couldn't actually free the princesses with a sharp arrow, but you could with a horn. So next was another world and as you could imagine, it wasn't fun. So the enemies here just do a lot of damage with their fireballs. And similarly to the thieves, they just like to stand back and spam it. So like in every challenge run, this area wasn't the most pleasant. But it can only get better from here, right? No. So we come across a lot of these skeletons that have super speed and do quite a lot of damage. So it only cost a few brain cells and a bit of hair, but we made it to the next boss of the run. And this level was already bad enough as it is, so surely we got a nice easy boss. No. So like in every challenge run this is a gimmick boss and therefore you have to defeat it using the sandwich mode this means for most of the challenge runs including this one it's physically impossible to defeat this boss so to get past this part we unfortunately did have to use the sandwich mode to defeat this boss so after deciding that i am the honored one i then went on to the last boss of this level and for the last boss of this level it was surprisingly not too bad for an entire level that's just annoying and a run killer this boss is surprisingly easy so as mentioned at the start of the run, the horn has insane vertical range, pretty much meaning that any boss that has a hitbox above our heads, the horn will hit. So all we had to do was stand underneath this dragon head here and just keep spamming sweet tunes. So with the dragon boss dead, we could get the golden wheel, meaning all we had to do is get one last item. And that item just so happened to be at the end of industrial castle. So the industrial castle is known as being once again another very annoying area, which is a common theme when your only source of damage is a horn and a shovel but i gotta say it wasn't actually that bad it definitely did take a while it wasn't fast by any stretch of the imagination but in terms of actual difficulty we got through it without any real problems the only issue is when we got to the final boss we didn't have any healing potions this meant that we unfortunately died however after buying more healing potions i ran through all of the industrial castle again and made it to the boss once more for this boss fight the only real problem was the fingers here and that is because the hit box was a little bit wonky with the horn so i had to get into a position that was slightly underneath the fingers in order for the horn to hit so timing here was key as if i'd made a mistake it was very hard to recover but after a while i was able to defeat the final boss of the industrial castle and i let my chat decide what to do with the prince after being defeated and wanting to turn his life around, the prince could go away and start a charity, get married, and eventually start a family. So letting the prince live would allow him to right his wrongs and create a better life. So of course my chat wanted to... 
So whilst on the run, I ended up in the desert, which turned out to be a pretty annoying area, mainly because the enemies here have a lot of damage resistance. And on top of that, you have the beetles that go underground and do constant damage and you're not able to do anything about it, plus enemies that don't have a great knockback. But that wasn't even the worst of it. So for the UFO boss fights, pretty much every single time I've played this game, it will only spawn a couple of aliens. But this time, these alien ships was churning them out. And for this run specifically, the aliens were not any fun because they like to keep their distance and shoot their blasters at you. This meant trying to thin the herd of the aliens was very difficult, but also trying to get damage on the UFOs was also a problem, making this the hardest encounter I've had with the alien ship. But surely on the alien ship would be easier. I was so wrong. So to start off this level, you had to defeat a massive wave of the aliens. And normally this would be easy since all of the aliens were one shot. But when you only have a shovel and a horn to do damage, it was pretty rough. But once I defeated all of them, I could finally escape the ship and move on. Okay, okay, just a bad run. Let's just do all that again and give it another go. Okay, third time's a charm. Let's, let's give it another go. Have you ever heard of a game called Castle Crushers? I'm sure a bit of beach volleyball will cheer me up. <laughs> I wish that was me right now. But the suffering doesn't end here as later on we come across four giant skeletons as well as their little speedster friends. We did manage to defeat them however but it wasn't without a great cost. We ended up using all of the healing potions so later on in the level I did unfortunately die. Meaning I had to rerun the entire area again. This is up there. Definitely one of the worst challenge runs we've done. It took a while, but we eventually made it to the Tromom again. So you have to refight this enemy, but this time it isn't classed as a boss fight, with a few more enemies sprinkled in there for good luck. So after spamming my horn, I actually defeated all of the enemies in the area, which meant we can finally move on to one of the most annoying bosses in the game. Now, the corn boss for some reason has an unusual amount of health, and on top of that is very difficult to hit, and that is due to the corn boss constantly moving around the arena as well as having attacks that will knock you down and also having moves that will completely negate any damage but for some reason i don't think the game expected anyone to defeat the corn with a shovel so i was able to actually get quite a lot of consistent damage on the corn boss by just digging at it with a shovel so it took a while like it always does but surprisingly wasn't actually that bad shovel strap OP. For the Medusa boss fight, the shovel wasn't really going to work since he constantly scuffled away from you so we had to use the horn for this fight. But for the boss itself, it was actually very easy since ever we figured out that there was a block button in Castle Crashers, all I had to do was block the snake whenever it attacked and then blow my horn. So after a little while, the Medusa boss finally died. Next was the full moon level which I would normally say is the hardest non-boss level in the game and that is the case for most runs but surprisingly for this run, it actually wasn't. The giants were a little slow to kill but wasn't that much of an issue. And for the next part, you already know what's gonna happen. Ladder strat! That is right, the ladder strat makes a return for the third challenge run in a row. So for this version of ladder strat, what we do is climb down the ladder as normal to group all the enemies together, then use our horn to hit all of the enemies. Repeat this for 10 minutes and we make it into the snow area. Now for pretty much every challenge run, the snow area was always seen as a breath of fresh air. However, for this run it was the complete opposite and that is because the enemies here will constantly be throwing snowballs on top of that there are also the enemies that would just be coming at me as normal this made it extremely difficult to get any damage on any enemies because if i got hit by one of these snowballs it would cancel my attack this meant each stage took me a very long time to complete and by the time i reached the end of the level i had no healing potions left and died this happened over and over until eventually we finally got the run that passed this section we eventually made it onto the ice king boss fight and similarly to the corn boss fight it wasn't difficult it just took a while that is because the ice king will throw off attacks and then teleport away meaning a lot of the times you have to kind of guess where he's going to teleport to in order to get damage and well a shovel and horn isn't really the best weapon of choice there is also ice on this level which will cause your character to slide on the floor making it harder to move around the map so it took a while but eventually the ice king died and we saved the third princess all that was left are the four final bosses. The first of the four bosses being the painter boss fight actually went pretty smooth. I originally tried using my horn to destroy the paintings meaning I wouldn't take damage from them but using the horn meant that my character stood still and I had to wait for the animation to finish before I could move again meaning I pretty much couldn't avoid the paintings. 
Luckily, however, we had max defense, so the paintings didn't do that much damage. So as long as we had the healing potions, we could pretty much just tank the paintings and focus on damaging the boss. And when it came to damaging the boss, the shovel was the go-to choice here as we could get two hits per attack rather than the one attack of the horn. And well, just repeat it over and over again until the boss finally dies. And for the second boss fight, you already know we abuse that PP ground strat. For the PP ground strat, you have to let the coffin hit you to go underground essentially making you invincible so you can just wait out the entire groom phase and when it came to actually damaging the boss all we had to do was block his attack and hit him with a shovel so two bosses down two to go next is the necromancer fight and if you've seen the other challenge runs then oh boy so the necromancer fight is easily one of the hardest boss fights in all of castle crashes so doing it with only a shovel and horn was a bit scary for my first attempt i didn't have much healing left from the previous two bosses so I just wanted to give it a test run to see how it went and I died. So I went to buy some healing potions and gave it another go and not surprisingly died again. So as expected it was very difficult to get any damage out with a horn and shovel since there were so many enemies coming at you and I had to stand still and wait for an animation to play just to get any sort of damage. So this ended up with me running from each side of the room just to get one horn attack off. However I quickly realised that this wasn't an effective method as most of the times I couldn't get my attack off or would just take damage. But what I figured out is that there are some enemies in this room that will throw bombs and these bombs can actually damage other enemies. So what I ended up doing was running back and forth all around the room and allowing these bomb throwing enemies to throw their bombs. And then I would try and bait enemies into them bombs and take damage. It took an extremely long time to do it but eventually I was able to kill all the enemies and well for the actual necromancer to himself like with every other challenge run he was so much easier and that is because every single damage move this guy has apart from one can be blocked with a shield so as long as you just hold down the block button he can't damage you on top of that he doesn't have a great knockback resistance so one blow with my horn would send him in the air meaning i could juggle him with my horn and that is exactly what i did until the necromancer died it was still a difficult fight but nowhere near as bad as i thought it was going to be so that meant that was only one last boss to end this run. For the final boss's first phase, the horn could actually damage and reach the crystals when they were in the air, so all I really had to do was follow the crystals around and blow my horn. Not a very difficult phase. For the second phase, he has two different coloured bubbles that he will switch from. The blue one meaning you can only damage him with magic and the red one being melee. So luckily the horn and shovel do count as melee damage, so all I had to do was wait for the red bubble and then get my damage on him, which was a little little bit annoying because he was very fast and would constantly move when I was mid animation but eventually I was able to get onto the third phase. Now the third phase was a complete joke since my horn has really good vertical range all I really had to do was follow him around in a circle and blow my horn underneath him. Yeah very easy phase. And same with the fourth phase, all I had to do was stand underneath and blow my horn. Except this time he does have spikes or legs, what are those? And he could hit you with them but once again all I had to do was block with my shield. The fifth phase is the exact same as the third phase, just stand underneath and blow my horn. The sixth and final phase however was a little bit more difficult than the rest of the phases and that is because he will constantly be moving around making it difficult to get any sort of damage. But on top of that, since I had to stand still to damage him it also meant I was pretty much guaranteed to take damage back as my only real opportunity to hit him was when he went in the air and summoned his meteors so it was a bit of an endurance fight since I had to manage my health and healing but eventually I was able to get the final blow on the boss and just like that the boss died the sky base began to fall so I landed on the king's crystal and caught the last princess I rode the king's crystal all the way back to the castle and ended up where we started this run all I had to do was kiss the final princess. You know I'm starting to feel like this game's trying to tell me something. And that's the end of the run. So what was interesting about this run is that there were two bosses that we couldn't defeat. One of them was the volcano boss which is almost a given in most of these challenge runs since it is a gimmick boss. But the other one was the giant troll during the carriage scene. And this is actually the first time in any of my challenge runs where I couldn't beat a non-gimmick boss. A bit annoying because I really wanted to defeat this boss but I just couldn't do it. Kinda sucks but 
but it is what it is. But before the video ends, I'd just like to give a massive shout out to everyone seen on screen here. The support you guys have been showing me over the past few months has been amazing and I just cannot thank you guys enough. I'm extremely grateful for every single one of you guys and the fact that we've got this little community built around a 15 year old game is absolutely amazing. So once again, thank you every single one of you guys for supporting my videos, leaving nice comments and just generally being awesome. But anyway guys, that has been it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.